All right, so here we have the new Venom series from Brother Hobby. These are 2206, 1900 kV, 2400 kV, and 2600 kV. Uh, so these were sent in by Brother Hobby, uh, so I can uh, test them and review them and show the results to you guys. So thanks, Brother Hobby, for sending them in for uh, for testing. Uh, so the one interesting feature about this motor is that it's one of the most sealed motors that I've come across. So by that I mean it's enclosed, there's nothing that is exposed, you know, this like uh, typical motors. So as you can see the, the motor armature pretty much uh, enclosing all of the motor. Of course it's not going to be fully sealed, it's not completely waterproof uh, because of course this has to rotate. But as you can see, for all practical purposes, it's pretty well sealed. Uh, so I guess the intent of this motor design is to be used in those environments that are harsh. You know, a lot of uh, wet grass, snow, a lot of mud, sandy conditions. So any environment where uh, there's potential for debris to get into the motor. Uh, so this would certainly come in handy in those situations, you know. so. You know, when you crash or when you're landing, nothing's getting on the motor and uh, possibly even damaging the motor because, you know, if you get debris or like uh, pebbles and they get, in be they get between the stator and the magnet, they may crack the magnet. But of course, having a completely sealed armature on the motor, of course, that's going to add some uh, weight penalties, which, you know, are unavo unavoidable. So there's compromises, you know, you want a light motor, it's going to be more exposed. You want a seal motor, it's going to be a little bit uh, heavier. When we check the weight, you know, we have to keep that in mind. So, quite an interesting motor from Brother Javi, and it's pretty cool that uh, Brother Javi is looking into filling almost every gap in their motor lineup. They're always looking to see what, what new feature they can bring in into the market. So, that's that's pretty cool from Brother Hobby, you know, they're, they're not uh, stagnant, you know, they're always looking for something new, so that's quite nice. And uh, the usual from Brother Hobby, it comes in this uh, very non-fancy uh, uh, box, and they just give you the minimal, uh, just standard 4M3 by uh, 6, looks like a uh, Allen screws, and a low profile aluminum nylock, so so pretty minimal stuff, uh, which is good if it keeps the cost down, uh, that's alright. As you can see the motor is uh, kind of interesting looking, it's completely sealed and it's got these uh, ridges. I imagine that's for to aid in cooling, since, since the motor is going to be sealed, uh, there's not, there's not going to be any air movement through the motor. So basically for cooling, uh, it's going to rely on the actual exchange of heat from the armature onto air. It's got uh, these uh, ridges here on the ring and on top. Uh, so that's going to be like sort of like a radiator, like a heat sink. Increase the area that's exposed to air so there's better exchange of heat. That's also on the base, as you can see, there's some ridges there. So the motor mount hole pattern uh, is uh, looks like they went with the standard 19. Uh, by 16, so 19 millimeters by 16, so that's the standard uh, pattern. So, and uh, they're uh, they're using a three millimeter shaft, and it's a one piece shaft, uh, three millimeter there, and it seems to be hollow. Let's see, yeah, it's a partially hollow, so it's hollow only this portion here. Of course, that's a three millimeter shaft, so not much that you can hollow it out right there. So the motor comes with about a hundred and 70 millimeters of 20 gauge wire for the motor leads. So typical of Brother Hobby, plenty of length to reach center mount at ESC, so that's pretty good. All right, so with 170 millimeters of wire, this motor comes in at uh, 36.2. And uh, if you were to cut the wires to 50 millimeters, you would cut that much wire. It's about 360 millimeters, uh, so that comes in at 2.8 grams. So let's tear that. Uh, so 33.4. So for a 2206, that would seem a little bit on the heavy side, but as I said, uh, you have to, we have to keep in mind that the purpose of the motor is to work 
in harsh dirty conditions so it's fully sealed so there's a lot of uh, material uh, here on the base uh, on the bell cap as you can see is solid uh, so 33 grams is actually not uh, I would say it's not that bad uh, for a fully sealed motor of course uh, this is a, a purpose uh, design motor uh, you know you're not gonna use it in an ultra light of course uh, you're gonna use it on, on a specific uh, build something that you may want to use like in uh, as I said in wet conditions uh, dusty conditions so you don't have to worry about uh, getting debris inside the motor you know if you crash it it won't get uh, uh, debris inside the motor that may uh, mess up the, the windings or get stuck in there. All three motors basically look pretty much the same. Uh, the 2400, 1900 and 2600, uh, they all look the same, the same color. So the only difference uh, is in the marking of the KV, as you can see. And of course the inside, the number of turns is going to be different. Uh, but uh, for all practical purposes, the motors look exactly the same. Yeah, so I removed the circlip on this one already, the 2600. So let's uh, pull it apart and and just uh, have a look what's inside. We'll put it on the magnifying glass to have a better look. Uh, so there it is. Let's get a close up. All right, so here's the bell and shaft assembly. There you can see the magnets. They're arc magnets. And uh, typical for Brother Hobby, most of their motors are using arc magnets these days. So as you can see, uh, the fully enclosed uh, bell right there. And uh, there's no uh, lip on the ring, on the bell ring. Uh, but the magnets seem to be pretty well glued. And uh, there is a purpose to not having a lip right there. So instead, what you can see the uh, there's actually uh, the edge of the of the ring uh, right here. It's kind of extended. So the purpose for that is, uh, as you can see, that matches. I don't know if you're going to be able to see here, but that matches the base. The base has also a little ridge uh, right there, and that. Uh, we'll see right now that matches right there so the extended ring overlaps with that ridge from the base so that helps seal, seal the motor and that's you know quite precise machining uh, because uh, there's absolutely no rubbing right there uh, so that's that's pretty good uh, you can see all the uh, detail uh, design that went into this motor uh, to try to make it as sealed as possible so that's that's pretty cool to see you know like attention to detail uh, so that's going to help keep uh, debris of course you know you you'll you probably still uh, for sure you know you'll get some very light dust um, because you know dust gets pretty much a anywhere especially this is going to be rotating at high speed so it's going to attract some, some dust, but none of the uh, large uh, chunks of debris that, that we see on the other motors. So it'll be good to use all four screws. So you also sealed up all those holes, so nothing comes through the holes. And if you're, if you're only using two or three screws, make sure you seal the, the ones that you're not using. Well, you should use all four screws anyways. But let's say you're only using two screws or one fell out, uh, you know, just somehow plug it. So there's the uh, stator, as you can see, as usual, from typical from Brother Hobby, impeccable winding, uh, very neat windings. And that bearing for a 3mm shaft would be the typical 3 by 8 by 4 So that's the standard bearing for a three millimeter shaft and that's what they're using and uh, let's measure the height of the stator should be six millimeters so yeah there you see six millimeters so and those are 0.15 laminations certainly very thin it's hard to see on the, even on the magnifying glass so 
So pretty much, you know, all the latest tech features on the motor itself, as far as uh, laminations on the uh, uh, on the stator, uh, single strand wire. So that should support pretty uh, good loads, you know, high current. Uh, arc magnets, of course. So a lot of a lot of the uh, uh, the known features that makes motors uh, perform these days. Let's uh, put this back on, and uh, we're gonna put the motors on the thrust stand and see how they perform with this type of motor. So there's some compromises, of course, uh, as far as the weight. Uh, the main attraction of the motor is gonna be how. Uh, resilient it's going to be to uh, avoiding getting clogged up with debris so that's the main uh, feature of the motor from what I can see it should really fulfill that uh, purpose it should perform well in that respect but also from looking at the uh, stator and all the other features arc magnets very thin laminations and uh, the usual single strand wire that Brother Hobby uses I imagine this motor is going to do uh, pretty respectable as far as uh, thrust and efficiency. So, so we'll check it out on the thrust stand with the usual props and see how it does. Alright, so let's take a quick look at the thrust test results for the Brother Javi Venom 2206-1900kV. This motor measure right at 1900kV by the thrust stand. So this is the low version of the Venom series. So because of that kV, I was able to test it from 3S to 6S using various set of props from 5 inch to 7 inch. On 5 inch, I went ahead and tested on 6S, though I kept the voltage at a nominal 23 volts. So 23 volts is equivalent to about 3.8 volts 
per cell. So I thought that was a good voltage since most packs are gonna voltage sag to right about that much when they're under heavy load. Also, I don't wanna stress my equipment. I don't wanna burn it up. So I thought 23 volts would be a good representative voltage for 6S since most are gonna be using small battery packs, 13 to 1500 milliamps. So most likely the voltage is gonna come down to right about that much. So also went ahead and tested on 5S and 4S for these five inch props. So here are the results. As you can see, the two blade prop on 6S, quite uh, impressive, I think, uh, close to 1800 and a very manageable 36 amps. So that's well within any 30 amp ESC and that's static course. So when you're flying and the props on load, that's gonna be quite a lot lower, uh, perhaps around 25 to 35% lower. So well within a 30 amp ESC's capabilities. So that's pretty good. On 5S, quite a good uh, amount of thrust 1340 very reasonable amp so as you can see the advantage of using high voltage is that you're able to get about the same thrust as you would uh, on 4s but at a lower amperage of course your power density increases because a six cell battery is going to be heavier than a four cell so it's not for free you know uh, you're also increasing the battery weight you can also decrease the battery size the cell size mm -hmm. And in some cases, you're able to run a slightly lower weight battery and maintain the voltage better than you would with a 4S. So that's the advantage of the 6S packs is that you could be able to run for longer time with a lower voltage sag. So that's one of the advantages. That's something to consider when you go into a 6S setup. For 6S, I think people are using anywhere from 1600 to 1900 kV, 2206 to 2207, 2306 uh, setups seems to be the trend these days. So then as we go with the more aggressive props, of course, thrust is going to increase, 1863 here and still manageable uh, 40 amps. On these props, I didn't go, I didn't test success. I thought, you know, that would be a, a good place to stop. I didn't want to overdo it, but most likely this prop uh, should be able to take success as well. With the six inch props, I also did test success with the King Kong 6040. Uh, the 6045 should also be able to uh, run success with about the same results. Uh, these two props uh, perform pretty close to each other, as you've seen in all the tests that I've done. They're within a few amps uh, difference. So this should be pretty close. And due to time constraints, I didn't want to test every single prop 5S success. So I thought the 6040 would be a good representation uh, for this motor uh, for a 6 inch prop. Uh, also, looking at this. 6040C, this new prop from Dow, I thought it would be a little bit more amp hungry, but as you can see, it's not. It's actually drawing lower amps than the 6045. Uh, so this should be also able to run on 6S, no problem. So as you can see, on 4S, it's about the same amperage and about the same performance as the 6040s. So it should be pretty close to this one. Then onto the seven inch props. I went ahead and tested this new one from Gen Fan, the 7042. I've read people saying that uh, they do quite well on their seven inch setups. So as you can see there, 1684 and pretty close to the 7045, 1680. Amp uh, is a little bit high, but that's normal for the flash Gen Fan props. What happens is that on static, these props will draw more amps but once they're flying, they unload quite a lot. So the amps are going to come down a lot and uh, they'll show high amps, but they'll perform just as well as these uh, standard props. Uh, these are mainly designed for flying forward. So when they're moving, they'll perform much better than when they're uh, just on static. All right. So that was a quick look at the thrust test results for this motor. As always, thank you for watching and hope you find the information useful. And until the next video.